so i'll be discussing primary neoplasm of appendix lesion demonstration how do we do characterization of the lesion uh, that is fine right understanding of surgical landmarks and uh, peritoneal cancer index and pause criteria uh, till date pause criteria was used for a uh, colorectal malignancies but uh, we have incorporated in our uh, day to day reporting also next slide please so how primary uh, neoplasm of appendix looks common names uncommon names and what they look like this is the normal anatomy where the appendix uh, appendicell orifice is almost 2 cm below the iliosacral valve anatomy is very well versed with the all the surgeons uh, next slide please these are the some names epithelial tumors uh, adenoma we are not discussing we will be discussing lam and ham uh, mucinous adeno ca uh, few slides then uh, net few slides and lymphoma few, sli few slides uh this is the criteria uh tumor types uh, lam most of the time they look like a mucin distended appendix with the uh, with or without wall calcifications and extra appendicial lesion uh, may or may not be presented with pmp and uh, the basic differentiation uh, dr shubdha mam has said that the it is the histological pattern and the high grade uh, mucinous deposition between the lam and ham uh, uh, and uh, surgical criteria defines according to the distribution of the mucin deposition and the characterization of lesions in the peritoneum next slide please and it is uh, according to the size criteria and the distribution most of the time they look like a small submucous mucosal mass within the tip of the uh, appendix and uh, sometimes around the uh, there you may find the calcification and the uh, mesenteric puckering around the lesion uh, next slide please so uh, most common malignancy is mucin uh, mucinous uh, neoplasm of the uh, appendix associated with or without pmp how do they look like presentation of mucosal is there peritoneal soft tissue implants will be there omental caking and involvement of the gastrointestinal tract and ovaries will be there loculated peritoneal collections in the entire peritoneal cavity starting from small loculated collections extending up to the large volume collections and large volume of ascites most of these lesions give surface undulations due to the mass effect by the tumor implants over the solid organ surfaces parenchymal invasion occurs uh, in the later stage of the disease linear and punctate calcifications may also be seen in the uh, mucinous deposits so these are the criterias for pmp uh, small bowel obstruction sometimes most of the time it is a closed loop obstructions in the pmp whereas in non mucinous neoplasm these are soft tissue mass like lesions or the subtle soft tissue infiltrations of the entire appendix without the mucosal formation remember this in a non mucinous neoplasm you will not see any mucosal formation second point is periappendicial fat stranding is one of the key feature and setting of the diffuse mural thickening around the lesion and it within the adjacent uh, uh, terminal ileal loops or uh, cecum will be seen and uh, most of the time they mistaken with the uh, interpretation of appendicitis or appendic appendicular lump if it is a localized disease of a non mucinous neoplasm next slide please so these are the mr images uh, the first is sagittal image the axial and the coronal image there is a linear tubular structure with a internal septation at the base and there is no, uh, there is no any periappendicular lesion is seen i think uh, okay so uh, the arrow is very well marked Uh, you can't see uh, you are not able to see any periappendicular fat stranding or any fluid collection except any anterior fluid uh, thin strip is there so this is a low grade uh, 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 appendicular mucinous neoplasm next slide why this is high grade you can see the periappendicular fat stranding and a diffuse uh, mucinous deposit across the uh, entire peritoneal cavity uh, you can see the surface undulations in the right subepitic and subdiaphragmatic region also on the on to the left side also so uh, these three images are of a different three patients next slide please coming to the mucinous neoplasm uh, well differentiated mucinous cas uh, uh, those are pet positive so pmp is non pet positive these are the pet positive well differentiated mucinous uh, uh, carcinomas uh, uh, see the uh, uh, try to uh, correlate with the two images the cystic lesion of the pancreas doesn't show any significant pet uptake whereas the deposits uh, show significant pet uptake in this region here you can see the mucinous deposit uh, muci mucosal of the appendix the mucosal doesn't uh, show such uptake on the pet images next slide please so this is the uh, appendicial neoplasm right uh, neoplasm so, tnm Baru, criteria in that image what was taking uptake Uh, that was uh, last the image please what was that disease so uh, on the right side it is a play uh, a ct image the, the other is pet image mucosal of the appendix in the right iliac fossa here yes 
that is not showing uptake. that is not showing significant uptake whereas the muc uh, mucin deposits or and the other uh, uh, peritoneal anterior omental deposits show significant uptake as compared to the uh, low uptake of the wall of uh, uh, appendicular wall, uh, uh, mucosal so that is high grade this is low grade two no, things in one disease no 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 it is diffuse high grade uh, mucinous neoplasm but when there is a mucosal mucin deposition within the lumen of uh, appendix is okay, there so wall shows up. the uh, wall shows the uptake uh, mucin doesn't show the uptake that okay. is what i want to say next slide please uh, coming to the next subset of uh, uh, diseases net what you see on images so uh, we'll be discussing images here small submucosal mass like or nodular like wall thickening in the distal one third of appendix post contrast images see uh, it is a vascular lesion it shows typical avid contrast enhancement calcification yes hypermetabolic uptake on indium 11 or fdg pet yes octreotide pet that is what uh, uh, scanning rather than the pet uh, not that dota uh, regional adenopathy is yes hepatic metastasis generally we don't see and if it is not as common as the other adenocs next here at the typical expected region of the right iliac fossa you can see a well defined uh, eccentric calcification is there in the appendicular uh, lesion but better seen in the uh, lower images on the last image you can see the mesenteric puckering is associated with the primary lesion next slide please so this is dota and the lesion you can correspond the primary uptake the on the other side uh, dota uh, uh, image shows a significant uptake that is the spleen not the primary lesion next slide please so coming to the dual energy uh, ct role of dual energy ct in the metastasis uh, this is the first image where the post ablation lesion is uh, cavity is there there is another heterogeneous enhancement i am not able to see confidently that yes definitely this is a lesion but if you see the iodine mapping in the lower map sorry lower image there is less iodine uptake in the primary arrowed image maximum iodine uptake in the arrowhead image and there is normal homogeneous uptake of the iodine within the liver parenchyma so you can differentiate in the dual energy scan what is the post ablation cavity what is the fresh lesion and what is the normal parenchymal enhancement next slide please next slide this is the tnm criteria i think madam has already explained next lymphomas just to go through primary lymphomas most of the time they appear like a uh, aneurysmal dilatation with the circumferential wall thickening and uh, uh, those are again the submucosal disease secondary lymphoma where the involvement of the appendix is secondary not the primary epicentered uh, lesion within the appendix next slide so these are the few sites where we uh, post investigation and uh, biopsy confirmation of the burkitt lymphoma in the first right upper image and rest of the two images where the primary lesion were in the some uh, else uh, part of the mesentery and uh, terminal ileum and there was encasement of the uh, appendix and then secondary deposit of the uh, appendix so first image is primary lymphoma secondary two are the uh, uh, rest of the two are secondary lymphomas next कहना क्या चाहते हो बेसिकली करना क्या है दैट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग सो कमिंग टू द पॉइंट दैट पेरिटोनियल डिपॉजिट्स व्हाट सर्जन हैज टू डू दिस ऑल थिंग इज रिटर्न इन द बुक द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सर्जिकल लैंडमार्क्स एंड लीजन कैरेक्टराइजेशन दैट इज व्हाट आई डू एंड दैट इज व्हाट द सर्जन इज मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट so right and left subphrenic spaces that is the diaphragmatic deposit we have to look for hepatic subcapsular deposits along the superior surfaces that changes the surgical management right and left sub hepatic spaces where the hepatic subcapsular deposit transforaminal spread through the foramen of winslow that is the surgical changes lesser sac retrogastric and retroomental disease peripotal spaces around the hepatodinal ligament deposits over portal vein hepatic artery common hepatic art, uh, common and uh, common hepatic and bile duct and cystic ducts and the hepatodinal nodes these are the most important part where surgeon gets difficult surgeries and they need to understand with the radiologist perigastric spaces around the gastrodinal ligament deposits over the left gastric artery coronary vein and left gastric nodes see all these important landmarks hepatodinal ligament gastrodinal ligament then coming to this splenic hilum those splenic hilum is not so important but these two uh, hdl and gdl these are the most crucial right upper quadrant parameters where surgeon needs to be very conscious about this before going into the surgery for that matter radiologist is important next slide so these are the some respective images where the right and left subdiaphragmatic spaces right and left subhepatic spaces uh, uh, 
and uh, the corresponding MR images where you can better see the mucinous component whereas uh, rest of the things are only fluid fluid and uh, deposits here you can see the fluid mucin and the uh, septations next slide fissures uh, the two most important fissure is a fissure for ligamentum venosum where the division of greater and lesser sac by the lesser momentum within this fissure happens and that is the area of importance for the surgeon fissure for gallbladder the potential space for the carcinomatosis next slide these are the ligaments which i already described next coming to the uh, right infracolic uh, inframesocolic and left inframesocolic spaces the jejunal and the ileal loops these are the most important part of the entire surgical resection whether they have to go for a mesenterectomy or a resection anastomosis if you are pro provide if you are offering a patient resection anastomosis his uh, lifestyle will improve if you are providing if you are giving a, a patient to a, a permanent stoma then things will change for uh, the patient Paracolic gutters, right hemicolon and left hemicolon and sickle serosal deposits are better seen on the paracolic regions. Sigmoid mesocolon, sigmoid colonic serosal deposit that I will show in the uh, next image in the pelvic peritoneal deposit how you, the MR is important. Next, so a few images of the solid as well as the cystic deposits in the uh, appendicular malignancies. Next, so anybody would like to take a call for description of this. Uh, I don't expect any radiological term, but uh, which one is solid, which one is mucinous, which one is cyst, uh, purely ascites? Anyone? So, the first one is solid deposits. With the encasement of the adjacent uh, sigmoid loop, you can see the bladder, cystic cavity and the ileal loop. The next is purely ascites. And the third is mucinous deposit. So, this is the beauty of MRI. You can easily differentiate between the mucin and the fluid. Next slide. Now coming to the importance, what do you want to see and what you would like to look for? The peritoneal cancer index, most important prognostic factor. Though the surgical evolution remains the gold standard, where surgical evolution has limitation is major invasive procedure. Hai. Second is under evolution in case of intraperitoneal adhesions. Sometimes the, if it is a large space occupying tumor, you cannot see beyond that. Hence, the imaging remains the vital role before going into the surgery. Next, investigation of choice, CT or MR. So, most of the institution follow the CT. That is the first line investigation. However, the recent investigation have demonstrated the superiority of MR as compared to the CT in evaluation of peritoneum. The limited contrast resolution of CT can result in similar imaging appearance of mucinous deposits, simple ascites and peritoneal tumor. Jo maine abhi pehle slide, pelvis wala dikha hai, that is the thing. CT has shown the underestimation of PCI which can lead to poor outcome of CRS. Next slide. The radiological PCI calculated with the MR imaging has good agreement with the laparoscopic PCI. We have proved that and we are still improving in our uh, clinical practice with the Aditi. Uh, uh, superior contrast resolution on MRI definitely soft tissue to noise ratio is very good. Uh, addition of diffusion weighted images where we can characterize the high cellular volume overload with the low cellular volume overload, increasing in the accuracy of the MR imaging for the depicting of metastasis is up to 90 percent. Gaurav, uh, yes. what is good agreement? How much percentage? So, if radiology uh, says PCI uh, 10, she is the uh, talking okay, about to next uh, session. Next session. So, <laughs> okay. we have uh, that. Yes, that is again uh, the in total diffusion sequences, contrast enhancement, sometimes delayed contrast enhancement and oral and rectal administration of contrast gives sensitivity and specificity characteristic of PCA of 95 to 70 percent respectively. I think that answers your question. Next slide please. Sorry, I took your point. Solid peritoneal and serosal tumors show restricted diffusions. And whereas the cystic do not show such kind of enhancement, mucin and uh, mucinous lesion do not show any enhancement they, except their peripheral enhancement. CRS and HIPEC uh, surveillance of MR is very good. PET CT generally we don't use. Uh, the sensitivity of FDG PET CT is higher in high grade versus low grade PMP, uh, and uh, values are of uh, around 40, 41% and 30% respectively. Next slide. We'll just skip, uh, I'm short of time. Next slide. Lesion characterization, fluid, nodule, scalloping, calcification, thickening, confluence of the lesion, omental cake, mesenteric omental and peritoneal caking, uh, separate regions. Then peritoneal retractions are very important. Mass-like lesions, 
visceral and serosal deposits and infiltration remember deposits and infiltration are two different points infiltration you have to intervene with the viscera or the uh, serosa uh, where deposits you just can burn or anything specific uh, aditya or uh, the uh, senior surgeons can guide us solid lesion with or without necrosis cystic peripheral rim of calcification mucinous uh, that i have already explained next next coming to the peritoneal cancer index next lesion size ls1 0.5 uh do we have two minutes one minute okay 0.5 L lesion size criteria is this next this is the chart where we report according to the uh, region next next so uh, just go through the slides uh, starting from central next right upper quadrant next next epigastrium next next left upper quadrants left flank left lower these are the mr images pelvis next next right lower quadrant post uh, retrocecal and uh, 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 deposits next these are the jejunal deposits most of the time it are they are uh, omental deposits but uh, uh, you have to check for the serosal uh, outline which is better seen on the mr uh next next all the small bowel same uh, region 9 10 11 and 12 same next 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 pause again next so this is the pause criteria pci sit subdominal wall involvement unfavorable sites small bowel and mesentery involvement and extra peritoneal metastasis the importance is this midline abdominal wall disease have better outcome than the lateral abdominal wall class uh, unfavorable lesion is next slide uh, where we have to uh, just understand the importance of that next slide so these are the unfavorable sites u1 sites increase surgical complexity u2 sites reduce the likelihood of complete site reductions next so uh, ending the talk here next take home message is discuss with your radiologist that is the most important thing mera bhi kaam itna difficult hai aapka bhi kaam itna difficult hai saath mein baith ke karna hai how do we do that is the most important thing most of the time with the single case me and aditi discusses more than 15 to 20 minutes initially even for 50 to 60 initial cases of mri i used to sit with the technician scold them then i get scolding from her we call that patient again but eventually we started a good protocol and did a good job next slide appreciate your radiologist <laughs> that is the important thing <laughs> galat karta hai usko sikhao but samjhao that is what aditi did and I, right now i'm here in front of you okay thank you and uh, thanks again for to